So the idea we talked about in the last video was this relationship between angular and linear velocity. So this is the equation we came up with. V equals to r omega. So if we just talk about this quickly, let's do a quick recap. So this is the linear velocity, right? And this is nothing new to us because even with kinematics, we used to call the linear velocity as V. Let's bring this here. R is the radius of the circle. And omega here is the new quantity, which was the angular velocity. Now we did study this equation, but we really didn't talk a lot about its practical implications. Where do you see this equation in real life? So this video will be dedicated to just that where we'll be talking about some examples from real life and that will help you to understand this equation much better. So let's start. So if we talk about a fairground ride like this, how can we apply the concepts that we've just learned to this scenario, right? So what is going to be the case here? How do the linear and the angular velocities apply here? So the idea is this, that when we are talking about a ride like this, it has a constant angular velocity, right? So it's tracing out some number of circles per unit time. And let's say that nobody is uh, turning this wheel. It has some omega, some angular velocity with which it is turning. But you know for a fact by experience that if you stand outside versus if you stand inside, that feeling of uneasiness, that feeling of dizziness would be greater if you are standing on the outside. Now, how do you explain this given the idea that the omega is the same? So the idea is simply this. Let's say that omega here is 2 radians per second, right? So this is the angle which, uh, which it covers every second. And now let's talk about V. So for the child which is on the inside, what would be the linear velocity that the child has? So omega is 2. So if we use this equation, V equals R omega. So for the child, what would be the case? So for the child, V equals R omega. So V would be the radius. So now you need to keep in mind that the girl is at a greater distance than the child. So this is the center, right? This is the point about which this entire uh, merry-go-round is rotating. So the distance from the center of the child is one meter, whereas the distance of the girl is two meters. So if we say that omega is two, and if we use this equation, then this would be the radius, which is one for the child, and omega is the same, two for both. So this turns out to be two meters per second. And if we try to find the velocity, the linear velocity of the girl, so that would be, again, V equals to R omega, but the girl is standing at a greater distance of two meters from the center. So that would be two times two, which would actually be four meters per second. So the idea is simply this, that when you are at a greater distance outside, the linear velocity is greater, which is why you feel dizzier when you are on the outside, right? Which is also why that, for example, when parents, uh, when they have their younger children go on to such rides, they usually make them stand near the center because the velocity is less, the linear velocity is less. So this is why they have a lesser chance and they feel less uneasy. They are safer there. So in a case like this, or for example, if I talk about a spinning disc, for example, where the omega is the same, then it then the linear velocity depends on the radius. How far away are you from the center? If you are further away from the center, you are going to have a greater velocity, which is simply what this equation shows us, that if r goes up, v also goes up, provided that omega is a constant. And similarly, if r decreases, v also decreases. So this is going to give you an idea. Uh, this is an important idea that you need to keep in mind as this will come in handy in a past paper question. Now similarly, you can also have another sort of a scenario which would be somewhat different. So let's say you have something like a gear and chain arrangement. And now we'll be talking about this as well. So this will just give you a pretty good idea of where do you see this in real life and how does this equation actually where can you see this equation actually being applied? 
So now we'll be talking about this idea. So this sort of an arrangement is not new to anybody who has ha who has ever been on a bike or on a bicycle before, right? So this is how you have these chains being arranged, and this is uh, this is how the gears are arranged, which are also technically called something called sprockets, and this is a chain which is actually driving these two gears. Now at first sight it appears that this gear is actually turning much faster than this one. But now here this is another distinction which needs to be made between angular and linear velocities. So the idea is just that both of these gears or, or sprockets they are being driven by this chain which is again moving at a constant rate. So the idea here is just that omega is not the same here but instead v is the same right and this is the same idea that would also apply for example if we didn't have these chains and if you just bring the both of these gears into contact with one another so v is the same because this, uh, they are being run by the same chain but visually you can also see that omega is not the same so here things change slightly so now v is the same and if we talk about this so r and omega are different for both of these gears now here this one seems to be spinning faster than this one and the idea is simply this that if v is a constant if v is not going to change then the one with the larger radius would appear to spin slower this is why the this gear which has a larger radius appears to be moving slower and the one which has a smaller radius by the reverse argument appears to be spinning faster right so this is another idea which is used in uh, gears and chains and this is another place where you can see this equation in action so this uh, this video was just meant to give you uh, an idea of how you can see this equation in action and in the next video we'll be continuing with more concepts